Hello everyone, welcome to Roman Just Codes. I'm Roman and in this episode I'll continue building our Flicky Home Automation app. This time we'll be persisting our device data in a more permanent way using Share Preferences. Make sure to catch the previous videos in the series so you can catch up or grab the link to the repo from the description for the full project. So this is what we're tackling in this video. We're able to persist our device data in memory as we add and remove devices in our app. We want to persist our added devices in a more permanent way when we dismiss the app, so we'll use share preferences for this. I'll manage my devices on a single device for a given room, that's why I'm picking this option. In the event that you want to eventually do remote monitoring and controlling of devices, you would want to pick something like Firebase, sync this data on other devices, do offline capabilities, etc. But for now, I'll run with this approach. We'll implement it in a decoupled fashion, that way its implementation is isolated, in case you want to swap the inner workings without affecting the overall architecture and implementation. Let's proceed. First, we'll implement the plumbing behind the saving functionality and we'll create this logic inside a service called Local Storage Service. Add it to your Shared Services folder. To this shared service, we'll inject an instance of Riverpods ref as well as a reference to the shared preferences entity. Add a method called init local storage as you need to bootstrap it from somewhere up front before using it. But how will we obtain a reference to our shared preferences object? Let's create a provider through which we can retrieve it. In our case, we'll start off with a simple provider that returns an instance of our shared preferences object. This instance returns as a future, so you should wrap the fetching of your shared preferences instance inside a future provider. You could combine these two, but I kind of like keeping them separate, that way I can mock this one and everything down the pike remains the same. Now that we're here, let's create a provider for our service so people don't just fetch it directly. Inject the required arguments. Back on our shared service, let's continue on our bootstrapping method. I'll use a completer through which I'll return a future instance. Then use the ref instance to read a reference of our shared prefs loader provider, but this time I'll invoke the dot then off of the shared prefs loader provider's future property. That way I can chain a callback to it once the shared preferences instance is fully loaded. If all goes well and my shared preferences instance loads as expected, I'll just return a future through the completer's future. That way, when I capture it on the other end, I can check on this flag. Then I'll handle both on error and catch error events, tacking on a corresponding callback and returning an error through the same completer. That way I can handle the corresponding response accordingly on the other end. This is one way to do it. You can use async await, which may be a cleaner approach, here I'm just showing an alternative on how to handle this. I'll create corresponding utility methods against my preferences instance, one to store the device configuration using as the key the device list config string property above, and an encoded JSON string as the corresponding value. Things in shared preferences get stored as key value pairs, so it's pretty straightforward. I'll add another method to get the device configuration as a string the same string I saved above and fetching it out of the shared preferences using as the key the property I said above. Because the information I'm storing is pretty small at the moment, this operation happens pretty quickly, so I'll purposely add a delay around its return from the service as such. Proceed to refactor the device's repository class and instead of returning a hard-coded list of device model instances, read the local storage provider and get the stored device list config as a string if available. If it's not empty, meaning it was previously saved to share preferences, use this string to decode it as a map and map it to a list of device model instances using the provided factory method from JSON off of the device model class and returning the mapped instances out of this method. As with the other services, we want to preload it during the loading sequence and why not? Let Riverpod cache this for us up front. Go to the loading notification model. Oh wait, I don't have to do anything. This is already taken care of for us. Haha, <laughs> see the beauty of well-architected Flutter apps? Thanks to my past self for making my life easier. All I'm missing from here is bootstrapping the storage strategy.
and done. Well, not really. There's nothing saved. Hence getting this warning message. Very convenient though. Gotta add some devices now. Let's hook up that functionality. In the devices repository class, create a method called saved device list, passing to it a list of device model instances. Use the existing hook method to JSON to serialize them into dictionaries or maps in this case for saving purposes. Encode the whole list as a JSON string and send it to save via the local storage provider's store device list config method. Let's add this functionality now to our saving workflow in the add device save view model. Replace this boilerplate code by the actual implementation in the save device list method. This time, I'll do the async await approach to show you that you can combine approaches if you deem it necessary, but it's good practice to stick with one approach for consistency. Just keep that in mind. If all goes well, return a true flag. Otherwise, let the catch block return a false flag so we can proceed accordingly. Now, check how I'll be using the boolean flag out of the save device list method. Check if saving was successful, then add an additional delay and flip the state to show the save animation, followed by another delay and popping the dialog. Otherwise, trigger the state change using the error state, but don't pop it so the users can see it. If you want, you can be more explicit in the error generated, but this is a simple approach you can use as an example on how to handle these situations in this way. Let's give this a shot. Add a device, fill in out what's needed. Saving. Saved. There it is. Now, to test that it got saved in Share Preferences, dismiss the app. Reload the app from scratch and navigate to the devices list. And voila, saving data to share preferences the simple way. Add another one just to keep testing. Nice. And with that, we've wrapped up this video. Feel free to wrap your own implementation of persisting your device data. I wanted to go simple this time around so you can take this much further. In the next video, we'll be leveraging all the plumbing we've laid down to actually talk to our smart devices in our network. We'll be using the core HTTP package, send HTTP commands to our smart plugs, and toggle them on and off, right from our app. You don't want to miss the next video, so stay tuned. See you on the next video. Hey there, I am Roman from Roman Just Codes. I hope that you found the content of this video very useful. And if you did, make sure to like it and subscribe to this channel. You know subscribing to this channel is free, right? Thank you so much for watching.